So my first tip to shoot better transitions with your iPhone 12 Pro is to use the tele lens, the 2x lens, as much as possible, especially for mass transitions, but also whip transitions, because that makes it a lot easier to shoot those. Because at first, let me show you that here, you have these edges and if I want to have a mask transition then I would have to mask that out at the edge everywhere and let's say I use the 0.5x lens now then you can see there is a lot to mask out at the edges because it's not straight also with the 1x lens there's a lot to mask out but when I use a 2x zoom lens there's a lot less to mask out especially if I take something like that here then it's actually quite easy to do and there's also another reason why the 2x zoom lens makes it easier you simply have to move the camera or the phone not that much anymore to create movement because the more you zoomed in the more every single little move that you do with the phone becomes visible so now let me quickly get the final shot here and that also leads me directly to the second tip which is to always press the screen a bit longer to lock your exposure and focus because otherwise that would look pretty weird so let's do that first i'm at 2x here now and i lock the exposure and af on the face now i pan the phone a bit to the right there we got the shot looks great i can easily mask it out there and i have a mask transition but i could also like just ramp it up and create a speed ramp transition out of that so that was only my first tip here to shoot better transitions with your iphone 12 pro and i would say let's have a quick look at the sequence i shot here with all the transitions and if you like that sequence leave me a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe if you're new to that channel And the third tip is also mostly for travel videos, but generally for videos where you can't plan every transition. And that is simply to add a bit more motion, camera motion at the beginning and at the end of every clip, because that gives you more flexibility in post to create transitions, even if you haven't planned it before. Because oftentimes you have clips and then when you edit them, you see, oh, I could make a nice transition there, but the clip is not long enough for that, etc. And if you add a bit more motion at the beginning and at the end of every shot, then you have that uh, available to you so let me just show you what i mean here let's say for example i want to get a shot of this statue here probably here i would go for one x zoom that looks a little bit better so i would also lock my exposure and autofocus again and now i will not just get a shot like that here which i could do but instead i want to start with my phone around here and then i will pan it to the side and I will also extend that motion even more so that I have a lot of motion before and after the actual clip so I can use that for transitioning stuff. Of course, you don't have to do the motion as slow as I did here, but I find it a bit safer because I can always ramp up the speed at the beginning and at the end if I want to have it a bit faster in the edit. But if I already shot it quickly at the beginning and at the end, then I can't slow it down, at least not that much because it's only 60 frames per second and not more. I shoot in 4K 60 here all the time. And my fourth tip is to simply use your hand as a foreground object to slide the camera behind if you don't find anything in your environment good example is here if I want to move the camera down and then add a next shot that I will show you in a second then it's good here because I don't have anything where I could slide the camera or the phone behind when I move down so what I do here now is I go to the 2x zoom lens I also set my exposure air flux again and then Let's record, put my hand here and now I simply move it down and behind the hand. And now because the hand comes in my frame, I can use that to transition into the next shot, which I will shoot now. So for this shot, I go where I've been before just to show you that, but now we'll do a movement from the bottom to the top and I will use the top edge here for the transition. So the first shot will go behind my hand and then the second shot will start where the top edge starts and then reveal the statue. So let's do that. Yeah. 
And you could also see here again, I extended the movement by whipping a bit down. I actually did it a bit quicker now here because I was not really balanced, but that's totally fine here. At least I have a bit more motion that I can play with in post to create a transition into the next shot. If I want to, of course, I don't have to transition every time. That's also something to consider. If you do too many transitions, then it's also a bit too much. So be a bit careful here in the sequence that I show you. It's definitely too many transitions. That's just for the sake of the tutorial here and this is a good example for our next tip which is to always make sure that you have matching camera motion clips for transitions so here for example I will start by filming on the ground with a super wide angle lens here the 0.5 X because I want to reveal the whole temple here and for that I need a super wide angle but that doesn't matter for the tip here really it's just that now I get the shot where I first start on the ground with the camera motion for the transition effect and then I point the camera up so now I got this shot but then I need to think later about what shot I can get to put before this shot so that I have a nice transition there so let's get this shot first again focus and a f-lock and now So here now I know I need a shot where also the camera points down or something like that and it moves up and that's a bit complicated usually to get such a shot. So now I will walk a bit around here and see if I can find something where I can get a shot that I can put in front of it. What's even better is if I can also get a shot where maybe I first have a movement from the right to the left and then it somehow moves up because that would be a perfect transitioning shot between the shots that I got before and this shot here because the shots before were from the right to the left and now I want to go from the bottom to the top so if I can get a shot like that where I first do a panning from right to left and then I move up something like that that would be perfect to add a transition there so let's walk a bit around and look for it so after walking around for five minutes looking for a potential shot I found one it's actually a bit creative here and I have to stand a bit farther away from it because I also want to use the 2x zoom lens to be a bit closer to the ground for this transition effect. So let's get the shot here. I have this little golden tiger here. Looks quite interesting. So I first, of course, I first set my AF and AE lock. And then again, more motion at the beginning. And uh, again, more motion, chip, and then I move my phone up like that, like I was first moving the phone like that and then I turned the phone around and created a motion like that over the ground because I got the transition part of the first shot starting on the ground. So here I want to end the transition shot on the ground as well because then it looks pretty much the same and that allows for a smooth transition. But also I started the, the shot by a motion from right to left so that I can perfectly transition from the shots that I got before. So always think about where does your motion go because ideally for a seamless transition the motion goes in the same direction as the other clip. That's very important to think about but of course if you go in the same direction every time that's also quite boring to watch. Then it's like left to right, le uh, right to left, right to le re left, right to left, right to right to left, right to left, right to left, you know, and that's boring. So sometimes you want to change the direction of your shot, actually not sometimes, but quite often. That's also one reason why you should not always do a smooth transition in every shot, because that allows you to simply make a jump cut to a clip with a different camera motion direction, and then you can change that. So that's something to think about. And here's another example for extended camera motion. So here I want to just slide and not pan. So I'm doing so by first going here behind the leaves and then also sliding. It was not perfect. I should slow it down a little bit in the middle. And as you can see, 
I also started like behind this bush here, then I extended the camera motion here a bit farther so that I have more room to play in post. And here I used the 1x zoom lens because it was like too close with the 2x zoom lens so that wouldn't work. But it would obviously also be a bit easier with the 2x zoom lens because that makes it easier to go behind the bush. So in that case I would not have to put the phone something like that here like so far away from the middle point but instead I could probably put it just here and therefore I need less motion to get the same shot. So if that statue would be a bit farther away that would actually be better because then I could use a 2x zoom lens there. And you've probably recognized in the temple shot before that we have a crystal clear blue sky here today and crystal clear blue skies are amazing for transitions because it's very easy to cut the or to, to key the blue out of the sky and therefore you can easily transition in other shots. So here I want to transition to the tree basically because that allows me to continue the camera motion in the same direction of course with the sky transition you could also move the camera up and like in the first shot and then move the camera down again as a transition but it's not as cool as moving the camera completely in one direction you could actually see that in the Mavic Air 2S Sam Calder video there where he first flies the drone backwards through the jungle, camera starts pointing up, crystal clear blue sky and then it transitions to the next shot where he is like walking on a rope and there's also just sky in the background. So pretty nice transition there. That's a very good example for blue sky combined with the same camera motion. So I try to achieve something like that here now. I'm also using the 2x lens again because I have a pretty nice gap here under the tree and by using this 2x lens I can make full use of that gap. So let's do that here. It's actually pretty hard. I'll actually do it here because otherwise the temple is in the frame even with the 2x lens so even with that lens it's already pretty hard to do. So I will simply start here where I've only blue at the beginning of the clip and then I bring in the tree. <laughs> And you've probably seen that while I was filming the tree in the first shot, I bend it over pretty much to also extend the camera movement again. And that is actually great because that allows me now to make a revealing shot here of that building. Because here again, we also have leaves that I can color grade a bit more yellowish so that it fits better to the tree later in post. And then I can use that here as my foreground object to reveal the temple. So let's do that here as well. And here I also need a lot of camera motion to have a bit more flexibility in pose to match it to the leaves of the tree. So start in that angle where I have a bit more green in the shot when I start. Oh, I think that's acceptable. And there you can see it like it's all the time when you do smooth transitions about having the first shot end with something that looks similar to the beginning of the second shot. Of course it doesn't count for mass trans transitions etc but most of the time if you stick to that general rule you have a lot of flexibility in post to create smooth transitions. So always think about that. So, so much about shooting transitions with the iPhone 12 Pro. I can overall say that this is an amazing phone for videographers or video creators and it actually replaces my GoPro as long as I don't want to do any action shots because like for all the casual shots where I don't have to go in the water and stuff like that, that's actually a much better quality that I can get out of this phone. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, then leave me a thumbs up and I will also publish more videos about the iPhone 12 Pro in the future. So if you're interested in that, then also make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if there's anything specific that you would like to know about shooting videos with this phone, then let me know in the comments below. So hope to see you in the next video.